Right, it's Tom with Heritage. Something a little bit different today. Um, we are changing a sauna into a smart sauna. So let's have a look to see what's, what we need to do to get this to work. Right, so here's the heater unit. Now at the moment, this is just on a timer. And we've got the temperature dial here. Um, I need to bypass this. Um, because the remote module uh, will control the duration and, and when the uh, heater comes on and off. So I don't want that to be limited um, by this timer. So this is the gizmo that we're fitting to control, um, control the heater remotely. So it's app based, so it's got local control. Everything's app based these days, isn't it? Um, we've got various temperature probes, temperature sensors. Um, we've got, I think that's a door contact. Uh, and then this is the brains of the operation. Uh, so here you've got your supply in, your supply out, uh, and this talks to home network wirelessly so that we can set up the app and what have you. And then here's the, the local control where we can dictate temperature. Never used this before, never seen it before. So we'll, we'll have a closer look once we get it fired up and we can have a look at some of the functionality. Right, so what we've got here is a mechanical timer. And so the supply uh, comes into this this then dictates whether the, the coals are on or not. Um, so with this timer set at zero, yeah, there's no longer that ticking sound. Nothing will happen even if we, you know, set the thermostat. So in order to uh, automate this sauna, uh, just followed a wiring diagram. I'm taking this um, this timer unit out of play. Let me just zoom out a little bit. You can see I'm then just temporarily wagering these connections as per the wiring diagram. Just taking that timer out of play basically so that once this circuit's energized, well, for the time being anyway, until I get my uh, controller on there, there will be no control of uh, whether the device is on or off. It will just be on according to the settings of this, of this thermostat. What we're then going to do is put that into the circuit so that that can do the switching and that can do the timing remotely. So we don't have to rely on this mechanical timer. Okay, so I see we've got the connections done in there. Just uh, recrimp those uh, because they weren't done very well when the sauna was installed. And now, essentially, the thermostat is the on off control. So if you hear it click there, so we've constantly got power coming in. This will then dictate the temperature of the elements that you can sort of see just poking out the top there. We could do that to just temporarily turn it off. The timer, even though I put it back in place, is no longer connected. Um, and so ultimately, we'll leave this set to a certain temperature. It'll be this module that does the switching. What I'm doing right now is we've got a temperature sensor that goes in the room. I'm just going to mount this next to the existing temperature sensor. In fact, we'll, we'll leave this in here. Um, so I've just taken down a piece of trim. You could see where the, the wood's lighter, where it's not been treated or it's not been, not been heated up by the effects of the sauna. Uh, and I'm just hiding the cable 
uh, and I'm just going to hide the cable in this very narrow recess. Obviously that piece of trim has just been fit over the top there to um, hide where you've got uh, these cuts in the timber. I'm going to come along here. I'm just multi-tooling out a very fine groove to run it in there. There's then also a piece of trim that then sits in that corner to hide it. We're going to drop down, again just taking a piece of trim off, carefully drill through into next door. The consumer unit and all the control gear, we're going to move that below this bench. So again, I've taken a piece of trim off, I'm going to run this cable down, I've just drilled, there's the hole where it comes through, just drop it down behind the bench and so we're not going to see any of that cabling. Right, so there's the cable for the temperature sensor. So you see a tiny bit of cable there, but we could just tuck that in between those two pieces. Runs up behind here. Along the top here, you can see so in places it's like butt up to the ceiling. So I've just gone along very carefully with the multi-tool just to cut a tiny little channel out, not even gone through the wood. So run it all the way down there, around the back of the light ready to poke through. There we go, I've got the sensor in, got the trim back on, all the trim in the corner, that cable's just hidden behind all that trim. Drops down this side, down underneath the bench. I'll just take that little bit of trim off there and there's my cable. Uh, for the thermostat, or the temperature sensor. Uh, now we're just doing door contact, so it's like a little barrel shaped sensor. We've got a strong magnet just there and that needs to be, you know, when the door is closed you can't see, you can see it from the other side but maximum five mil gap. Um, this is the, the, you know, the tails on the door entry sensor and just had to extend this with some of the off cut from the thermostat, just crimp that so it's nice and tight. And we could just check that that switch works. It's got a you know, continuity meter here. So with the door open, let's see if we can do this with one hand. There we go, you see there's no continuity there. As soon as we shut the door and the magnet engages the switch, there you go, you can hear that that is now closed, that switch. Cool, so a little bit difficult to hide the cabling for this one. Um, obviously this hole needs to be a very specific size so that the probe just wedges in there and doesn't move. Um, so I've just come at it from this side. Probably just try and multi-tool that just so it sits back. And then this uh, lino is actually loose, so I'm just gonna lay the cable all the way along under the lino, tuck it down, drill through, and again you see minimal cable on the show for that. Right, there you go, so there's the door sensor. Just drill through with a flat wood bit so that I could actually get the cable through and out at that angle. Slight cut using the multi-tool into the timber top the cable in very carefully and then just uh, some sealant there and that's just going to hold that cable in place just a little bit of slack on it and then it, it just goes underneath this loose bit of lino all the way along and pops through now we've got our two sensors all the control gear is going to be hidden away the last piece of the puzzle though is the control unit it is all app based as well but this is like your control unit customer wants it here somewhere and unfortunately this time I've got a big dopey gray four core cable to try and try and hide somewhere so the customer says that they are all right with it just uh, drop into the to the floor and then we can go along underneath the cladding there's a bit of a 
bit of a recess and just clip it along, but ideally it would be really nice to get that hidden away. Let's see what we can do. All right, so that's where the consumer unit was, the little consumer unit, and we're moving everything down here. So, we'll just take a look around the back. So we've got an outside consumer unit here, and it's fed um, in this tough cable, high tough. So this was originally the supply. Um, they didn't use enough cable, so it just like strung up like that, which was very upsetting. <laughs> Aesthetically, uh, the cable's not supported properly. So um, I'm gonna complete the supply, supply cable along this wall. It's all gonna be on the surface. There's nothing happening around the back here as far as the customer's concerned. So we're then gonna jump in uh, below the bench in the sauna. Um, I'm just using this whisker box that was here to um, cover up where the supply goes in just to join and extend. We've got the heater circuit and then lighting circuit. So I'm just going to drop, drop a length down of 1.5 um, rubber flex, which is UV rated, down to extend the lights and then just use some more of this high tough stuff. Um, bit of an off cut there just to extend uh, the heater circuit put the whisker box down here supply into the whisker box these two circuits into the whisker box jump through and uh, yeah just terminate the uh, consumer unit all right so unfortunately there was a noggin about halfway down so you can see you had to just drop the cable down the back there so all of this needs, needs a little bit of a tidy up, but let's just have a look and see where we're at. Um, so we've managed to move the board down here. We've got supply in to this unit, supply out to the sauna heater. We've got the temperature sensor, we've got the door sensor. I'm just about to put in the controller. So let's have a look in a minute when I've fired it up. All right, so this is my super happy customer, Tim. He's also a very good friend of mine. Let's have a look at it in action, one sec. Okay, so we've got it juiced up. So the control unit's come on. We've yet to set up the app. So you can see it's uh, just saying there's no Wi-Fi at the moment. Temperature goes down as low as 40. 13 is the current temperature on the sensor, which if we look at the old school analog uh, thermometer, you can see, yeah, it's about 14. So this is detecting the temperature in the room. Um, we could just uh, manually spin this round, click it in to set a temperature. And because I've got the door open, it's not gonna do anything. There we go. Close the door, you can hear the relays click in. That just goes to show you it's heating. Just listen carefully. There you go, you could just hear the uh, elements buzzing uh, before I open the door. Obviously that kills it. So we're just gonna set the app up, have a play with that. We have an IP address, are we happy Tim? I'm very happy. Oh. Look at that. I was punching in the, the Wi-Fi details now. So next up. See if the app works. Right, so Tim's got the app set up now. Don't know how to use it. Press the start. So I'm pausing it. Are you sure the sauna is safe? Tom? Uh, I mean, I, I'm, you know, all lubed up and ready to go. There we go. Right. Cool. So how do I turn it up? Ooh, 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 oh, there you go, ooh, click ooh, and drag. Look at that. Oh, there you go. Oh, you're at 80. So, uh, is that, what, what does the little clock do down there? Is that your schedule? There you go. Oh. They so start quarter past seven, three hours, end at quarter past 10. Magic, heating starts in two minutes. Cool. So there you go, what's it called again, this product thing? This is the Hume. 
Hume Sonic controller. Good stuff. Very.